All right, hey everyone, hi. Hi everyone. Hi, okay, can you guys let me know in the chat box if you guys can hear me and see my screen clearly? Hello? Okay, cool, thank you so much. Hi, Richard. Hi, Jeffrey, hi, Juan, hi, Clarice, hi, Alex, hi, Maturin, Christian, Emerson, Ellen, Sergio, uh, so many of you here today. There's still more joining. Okay, this attendance list, attendance list is not stopping. Um, since we're waiting for everyone else, hey Basil, hi Carl. We're waiting for everyone to kind of join and settle in. Can you guys just let me know where you guys are from? Because this is my first time, I think, taking you guys for take mail, or actually maybe second time. Philippines, okay. Hi, Jeffrey. Paris, Philippines as well. Philippines, so many. Okay, uh, I used to live in Philippines, love the place. I lived there for like a few months, I think. Philippine, Philippines living in Dubai, nice. Hi, okay. I'm assuming majority of you here are Filipino because I see the answers coming in and it says Philippines, Philippines, Philippines. Okay, jo Jocelyn, Philippines as well. Okay, welcome everyone. Okay, I do still see when is the next lesson. Oh, hey Desiree. I, I had a feeling David was you. I was like, wait, David was, David seems really familiar. Hey, Christian. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start while the rest are joining because I still see the attendance list um, moving. That means there's still a lot of you still joining. So for those who are still coming in, uh, take your time because I'm just going to do the introduction. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to our webinar today uh, with TechMail. Uh, we do this, we do Mondays as live trading analysis for, for you guys on Mondays. Okay, so today we're going to focus on looking for probable setups on the charts today. Oh my gosh, Desiree, today is a public holiday and you're still like, <laughs> you're still in, <laughs> you're on the ball. Okay. Um, so disclaimer, disclaimer, you guys know how this works. Um, today's material or webinar should not be construed as trading advice. Everything I share here today should only be taken as educational. Okay, this is not a signals group. It is not a forecasting group. We are here to ultimately grow and learn so that you guys can, you know, grow your accounts and um, be better at trading okay a risk warning trading cfds and forex carries significant risks especially if you are trading on margin when you trade on margin the risk immediately multiplies by the margin you are taking so do be careful if you guys are new to trading for those who are a little bit longer in the game you guys already know all of this you guys know the risk management how to do risk management and whatnot but this is for everyone, but more so for the beginners here, okay? Okay, let me move on to the next slide. Uh, yes, let me introduce myself. For those who don't already know me, I've only taken you guys once before. So for those who are new here, you probably don't know um, who I am. My name is Cassandra, you can call me Cass. I am an investment analyst and a prop trader here at Everest Fortune Group, okay? So Everest Fortune Group, we are an award-winning FinTech company based in Singapore. So yes, I am doing this webinar from Singapore. I see a lot of Filipinos here. I just want to, I used to live in Philippines. I was training uh, in Philippines for swimming, right? With the national coach. Um, yeah, so it's good to see a lot of Filipinos here. It brings back our memories. Um, we, so 
Oh, a little bit about Everest Fortune Group. Oh, okay. Richard is from Singapore too. Nice to meet you, Richard. Okay, uh, we're, we are the finalists for Best Forex and Best Equity Research for 2019, 2020, and 2021. So what we do here at Everest Fortune Group, we heavily focus on research strategy, uh, planning, and um, yeah, basically we kind of, kind of spend a lot of time in the charts looking, uh, forecasting where the charts are going. So we advise brokerages, banks, uh, hedge funds, uh, financial institutions on where we think the markets are going. And today we have a special partnership with Tickmill to bring you guys this webinar. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh yes, Richard. I was, I, yes, your name does look familiar to me. Um, Oh, you guys are everywhere, aren't you? <laughs> like Desiree is here, Richard is here as well. Okay, you guys are everywhere. I didn't, I wasn't sure if you guys were the same. It's the same Richard, but yes, you guys are everywhere. Um, so yes, um, if you guys have any questions at all, don't be shy, ask in the chat box. Again, Tickmill brought this webinar for you guys, ultimately so that we can, you guys can grow in trading. Right. So if you have any questions regarding trading that you need me to help you with, you need to answer, do feel free to ask in the chat box at any point of time. Okay. So don't be shy. Okay. So our agenda for today, you guys already know we're going to do live analysis session, right? So we're going to go into trading view, look for setups, hopefully probable setups. We're going to analyze the charts and hopefully they are probable okay if they're not probable please do not do not do not consider taking the trade because chances of you losing or hitting your stop loss based on probability will be high okay so that's all for the introduction folks um again questions anytime throughout the webinar you can ask okay so don't be shy okay let me just go straight into the uh, trading view. If you guys have any requests on particular pairs or instruments you want me to look at, please ask now. Uh, request for it in the chat box so that we can go through this. Okay, um, we can go through it together. Can I just double check if everyone can see my chart? Okay, we've got thing for gold. Can I just double check everyone can see my charts? Because I don't want to be analyzing gold and no one no one being able to even see my charts. Okay, thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Oh, Chantel. Okay, thank you, Sergio. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna go straight into goal. We've got two requests in already. First one from, um, let me see. Okay, John is requesting for goal. Richard is requesting for JPY. Maria also requesting for JPY. XAU USD. Let's see when is gold going. Oh my gosh. I just have to say, Richard and Desiree, you guys are on the ball, man. Today is a public holiday and you guys are still here grinding it out. <laughs> uh, it's a public holiday here in Singapore because it's a uh, Hari Raya. Okay, so uh, anytime I analyze the charts, I'm going to delete all drawings, clear all drawings and indicators because we want to start with uh, clean, clean chart so that we don't have any bias. Okay, so today is still trading day. <laughs> Leverage. Okay. Can you really explain why on leverage versus on leverage for her? Why would you form a loss faster with entry and stop loss? Okay, so why? on leverage, you go bust faster is because if you win, you win more, you lose, you lose more as well. So if you're going one, one to 100 versus one to one, one to 500, it, that means that whatever you win is multiplied five times more than 
the one to 100. But if you lose, it also means that you're losing five times more than uh, going one to 100. So uh, I think leverage is very scary. I personally do not use leverage. I know leverage um, makes a lot of money for a lot of people, right? But I also know leverage losing money for a lot of people. Therefore, I personally, who am very risk adverse, I don't use leverage at all. Uh, that being said, you can still use leverage if you are a risk taker. I personally don't. I just like to keep it easy and safe. Okay, so let's start with gold. The first thing I noticed with gold is that it's moving in a downtrend, right? Uh, if anything, it is moving in a descending channel. So let's pull out the descending channel. Okay, we've got a descending channel here. Whenever we find a channel, it means that we expect price to move in this channel. And because it's descending, we expect price to move in a downwards uh, trend in within this channel. Okay, so that's the only thing we're trying to identify when we are on the bigger time frame. Okay, maybe we can highlight a horizontal area here. It's a very good horizontal area actually because it lines up with a few horizontal areas. Let me just remove this. Okay, uh, so this horizontal area touches this price once, touches here twice. It just means that it is a significant horizontal area. Okay, and it's a key area we want to take note of. So let me just delete all of this. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the smaller time frame. We only start with a bigger time frame to get a idea of where we think price is heading in terms of uptrend or downtrend. Okay. So now we're going to go to the four hours, right? We're going to go to the four hours. Let me just, um, progress. Okay, so now that we've got our trend, we kind of have our bias already. So our bias right now for XAUSD is definitely a short because why it's moving in the descending channel. There is downwards pressure. Uh, it just recently broken the support that has now turned to a resistance, okay? This, this is, I would say, is a significant support. Price came here once. This bar needs to be pulled away, okay. Twice, three times, four times, and on the fifth time, it fell. Okay, hey guys. Um, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay, give me a sec to reconnect everything. Is everyone still with me? Okay, uh, I don't know where I got cut off. So my computer just suddenly said, um, Wi-Fi reconnecting for some reason. It has never happened before, right? So I don't know where we stopped. Did you guys hear me talk about uh, Bob? I was talking about this thick man here, Bob. It's in a descending trend. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start with Bob. And I was literally just saying, oh, Desiree would have heard this so many times already. But yes, I needed to show you guys this example. Um, so that you guys can relate to me better. Okay, everyone can see my screen, right? This literally has never happened before with the Wi-Fi. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Carl. Thanks, Desiree. Okay. Uh, so, 
I was saying Christ came here five times and he had to take five times for Christ to break it. So Christ came here once, twice, three times, uh, four times, and on the fifth time, it finally broke. So now I have to explain to you why this is super important. So we've got this really badly drawn stick man here. We'll call him Bob, okay, for everyone, so that it's easier to remember. His name is Bob. So Bob is walking to the right, okay? He's walking to the right, he's walking to the right, he's walking to the right. He reaches the door, okay, and he realizes the door is very heavy, okay? It's made out of stone. It's made out of very, very heavy stone. So he pushes the door. He tries to push the door and he fails to push the door. So what does he do? He, he turns back, okay? He's like, okay, I give up. I don't want to do this anymore. Okay, then he comes back tomorrow and he pushes the door again. He fails, he turns back. So it's similar with Price. You can see Price coming here one time, it failed to break, it turned back, came here the second time, failed to break, it came back. So on the fifth day, um, Bob realized that, oh my gosh, no matter how hard I push the door, it's not going to break. So what does Bob do? Bob goes to the gym. Okay, he goes to the gym, he now has muscles. Okay, he has muscles now. He's stronger. So when he comes to the door, he pushes it. He manages to push it open and he's able to enter into the next room. So whenever we see a strong support and resistance, it doesn't mean that Christ will forever not be able to break that support or resistance. But it means that for Christ to be able to break a strong support or resistance, Christ would need to have a very strong bullish or bearish momentum. Okay, the momentum needs to be so strong that it is able to break such a significant level. Similarly with Bob and the door, because Bob is so tired of not being able to uh, push the door, he goes to the gym, he now has muscles, and now he is finally strong enough to push the door open. So Christ being able to break this area, it just shows us, it, this is important, why? Because it just shows us that the bearish momentum is so strong right now that price is finally able to break this very strong support. It tried four times before and couldn't, and now it has finally broken this support. Okay, so we are going to now acknowledge that the current bearish um, pressure and the bearish momentum is very, very strong. Therefore, we are very biased to get in for a buy or sell. Okay, you guys let me know so I know if you guys are still following. Do you think if the bearish momentum is strong, we should be getting in for a buy or a sell? Okay, thank you. Everyone's still following things. Thank you, thank you. Okay, cool. We should be getting in for a sell because we want to follow the wave, right? Um, although I'm actually, I specialize in reversal trading. On a normal day when I'm not looking for reversal trades, I like to play the continuation. Continuation means that you look for trades following the trend. Why you do that? Because chances of you getting the trade correct is higher than looking for reversal trades. Reversal trades, you get it right, you're going to make a lot, a lot of profit, okay? Because you're basically timing the exact moment that the downtrend stops and you're getting in for a buy, okay? Those makes a lot of profit. It doesn't happen all the time and chances of you getting it wrong is very high, okay? So it's better to play continuations, especially if you are new to trading. You want to play continuations because you want to ultimately follow trade. Okay, so now that we've identified here as a strong uh, support, usually what I would prefer to see, right, if price breaking, it coming back to test this support area, this support now turn resistant, and then you get in here for the sell. Okay, you get in here for the sell, especially for this charge charts in particular. Why? Because whenever I'm doing charting, horizontal levels are always my priority. Okay? Horizontal levels are always my priority. So when I'm looking to the left, I'm looking to this whole area here, I don't see any horizontal levels. It just means that I can't call an entry from a strong enough area. Unless we look for Fibonacci confluence, that's another way to look for an entry as well. But I much prefer if there was a horizontal level. Okay, there's one right here, but it's super far away. That was like literally December 2021, which is fine, right? And price has broken that as well, okay? So um, using these two horizontal levels as a reference, I'm gonna use this two as my possible entry. We are looking for a sell, okay? Remember, we are biased that price is going to drop because of the very strong bearish momentum. There's two things you can do. One is wait for price to retest here, which it kind of already did, and then enter for a sell. Two, 
wait for price to retest here and then enter for sell from here. So I am going to rename this so you guys know what I'm talking about, right? So I think the two possible entries will either be your first resistance or your second resistance. Okay, where are you going to play it to? You can play it to the next horizontal level. There's a next horizontal level here. This is the next one. One, seven, two, three is your next one. Okay, so your two possible entries for this cell, just based on horizontal levels, levels and bearish momentum alone, is either from the first resistance or the second resistance. Okay, these are your two possible entries. Uh, personally, because I was saying I'm not so much of a risk taker, my entry will always be at the second resistance. If price doesn't get to the second resistance, I tell myself that's totally fine. I'll just take it that I missed the trade. Okay, I just take it as I missed the trade. Sorry, I'm gonna change this to first support. Okay. Um, okay, now that we have found our analysis, our entry level, uh, don't get too excited, okay? Please don't get too excited. We're not done yet. Uh, Ellen, I'll get to the stop loss in a bit. Don't get too excited. This is just an analysis based on horizontal level. So whenever we're making an analysis, an analysis, you need to make sure to combine it with many, many different things. Why? I'll give you an, another analogy. I think this analogies are important, okay? This is what keeps me grounded as a trader as well. Let's say you go to a boutique, okay? You get a pink dress. You don't know if it's nice or not. So you don't know if you are going to buy the dress or not, okay? So you have your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your, your grandmother, whoever is there with you. So you ask your, your father, is this pink dress nice on me? If he says yes, it will kind of convince you to buy the dress, right? If he says no, then you are, you are probably not gonna get the dress, okay? So you ask your dad, he says yes. You ask your mom, she says yes. You ask your brother or your sister, she says yes. You ask your grandmother, she says yes. And then you ask your brother. Your brother said, no, that dress doesn't look good on you. And then you're just thinking, mm, okay, I don't, I shouldn't even take my brother's opinion into consideration anyway, because, because first of all, he's, he's a boy. Maybe he doesn't have very good taste in women's clothes. Okay. And number two, because he doesn't have very good style himself anyway. So I don't really take my brother's opinion into consideration. So right now what we're doing with the charts, like in terms of the analogy is right now horizontal levels and this trend line is telling us that it's the cell. We want to get more opinion. So the, the channel is our father, for example. The horizontal levels is our mother, for example. Now we need to ask our grandmother if it's really a cell. So how do we do that? We combine it with Fibonacci levels, and then we combine it with indicators. If the Fibonacci levels are telling you it's a sell, if the indicators are telling you it's a sell, that means everybody is in agreement that this is a sell, we should be getting in a sell. Everyone is telling you that the pink dress is nice, of course you're gonna get the pink dress, right? But if 10 people tell you, oh my God, this pink dress makes you look really big, uh, this pink dress is not flattering on you, you're not going to get the pink dress. So similar with price, you're not going to get into a trade unless enough technical analysis is telling you to get into a trade. Okay, so let's pull out the uh, Fibonacci so that we can identify if there is confluence, right? We're trying to find confluence um, at the first resistance. For those who are new here, you probably wouldn't know what I'm talking about, um, but that's totally fine. You guys can join our topical webinars. Okay, so why am I go drawing Fibonacci levels? Basically, again, sorry, this is Bob, he's walking, he's walking, sorry, Bob is badly drawn. Okay, uh, there is a door here. If there is a, if there is a Fibonacci lining up at the first resistance, second resistance, first support, it just gives strength to the support and resistance, okay? It gives strength to the support and resistance. So when Bob reaches here, the Fibonacci will represent a very heavy 20 pounds dumbbell that is behind the door, okay? So not only now the door is super heavy and made out of block, we now also have resistance behind the door and barrier behind the door, making it even harder for Bob to uh, push the door open. Okay, so let's, um, I tried, couldn't really find any Fibonacci level lining up, right? The more Fibonacci levels we can find lining up um, 
at our support resistance, the better, but in this case, none. Okay, there is nothing lining up at our first resistance. Okay, that just means that our door here, the first door that Bob needs to push only has a door. But if he continues to walk, there will be another door. Okay, I don't know if he'll be able to break that door. Um, because there's nothing lining up at the first resistance, it just doesn't give me confidence that price is going to reverse at the first resistance. You know what I mean? Okay, if price were to come here at that first resistance, if it were to retest here, and it is not a strong resistance, it just means there is a chance price might break, go higher, and then when it reaches the second resistance, which is another resistance area, only then it will turn back from there, okay? So this is, Yes, it is a super interesting, uh, super important. It's super important to use uh, confluence. Okay, so the first resistance doesn't look like a very strong resistance. Okay, so based on technical analysis, based on Fibonacci levels, I can only narrow down that I don't think the first resistance is a strong area. I might be wrong. Price might just come here. It already did that retest and just reverse from here, right? It might just do this. But based on technical analysis, I think there's a chance that price might go higher. And then at the second resistance, only do you enter for the sell. Okay, I know some of you looking at this be like, oh my God, that is so far away from the second resistance. Price is so far away. That means this trade is so far away. Okay, you know what the good thing is about trading? There is so many charts for you to chart on. This gold trade, I think it's a sell, but I only think the sell will happen at 1786. Price is a little far from our entry. So in the meantime, we can go into other charts, analyze, and hopefully find something that will play out a bit sooner. Okay, so for gold, XAU and USD, this is my analysis for XAU USD. I think the first resistance isn't strong enough. The second resistance is probably the stronger area to get in for the sell. Okay, where do you sell it to? The first place you can sell it to is here, the first support, okay? The second area you can sell it to is back to this swing low here. Where do I put my stop loss? Um, okay, so usually if it's any other pair, I will put my stop loss very tight. Okay, I'll put my stop loss here. Why? Because I expect my analysis to be so accurate that I expect it to come exactly at this point and reverse exactly at that point and does and do not hit my stop loss. Okay, I expect press to do the exact turn from where I forecast it to be and then it misses my stop loss. But for goal, Okay, so the thing about trading, it also helps if you know the characteristics of a particular pair. For gold, I will never take that risk. I will move my stop loss a bit higher, maybe above the next swing high or the next swing low, the next horizontal level. So there is one horizontal level here and there is one swing high here. I can put my stop loss just slightly above that. Okay, why I say with gold, you cannot have a, stop, a tight stop loss because gold is a pair that XAU USD is a pair that wicks a lot. Look at their wicks, okay? So even though you might be correct, even though price might come here and reverse from here, right? And this analysis might end up being correct. You might end up being wicked out. Number one, they are spreads, okay? You need to remember they are spreads with brokers. Number two, because gold wicks a lot, it might just wick you out and come back uh, end up being correct, okay? It might just wake you up and end up being correct. So I'm putting my stop loss here makes it very unlikely for price to reach my stop loss. Why? Number one, it needs to break this resistance. It needs to break this resistance and it needs to break this channel before it can reach my stop loss. It needs to break a lot of things before it can reach the stop loss. If it really does hit the stop loss, then fine. I will take this loose as a... I will take this loss with pride because... It was already an unlikely loss, right? So even if I lose this trade, it's totally fine, okay? How can we earn more income from selling and buying? Use technical analysis to narrow down the best entries, okay? I think the entry is key. Like getting in at, the bet at a good entry is winning half the battle already, right? 
imagine people who got in at the first resistance and ends up going to the second resistance, right? Those people who got in at the first resistance will be panicking. People like me, I will never get in at the first resistance because I don't like that feeling. I rather wait. If it doesn't reach my first, second resistance, fine, I miss the trade. If it reaches, then yes, I got in on a super good trade. Okay, so um, I think it's a lot of trading psychology as well. Okay, so let's move on to USDJPY. So again, let's conclude the analysis for XAUSD. It is a bearish uh, bias. I have a bearish bias for XAUUSD. It's just that the entry for the sell is not anytime soon. Okay, it could be tomorrow, could be the day after. It may not even reach there. This is so strong against gold and the other major currency because we've been beneficiary of one you can turn on and some other is new. Okay, just give me a sec. Let me go on to XAUS, uh, USDJPY first. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Let me clear everything. Come on, Mouse, why are you doing this? Okay, I remember why I drew this this way. I was calling a reversal from here. Okay, so I was calling, it was an uptrend. I was calling the reversal of the uptrend. I say reversals make a lot of money, but a lot of times you are not correct and it's very hard to catch reversal trades. Okay, so it's better to just follow the trend. So in that case, you, did you guys see how price just nicely respected the channel? Okay, cool. Let's analyze USDJPY for a bit. Okay, where is my channel? Again, there was an ascending channel which price is nicely respecting, right? It is reaching the top of our channel. We expect price to reverse from here, okay? Although price is moving in an uptrend, based on the channel, right? Based on the channel, we expect price to reverse from here, okay? So let's, um, that's a little tricky because we're going against trend. I much prefer if price was at the bottom of the channel, then I will confidently get in for a buy. I will confidently and happily get in for a buy, but this is, we're going in for a sell in an uptrend, which is going against trend, okay? I don't like getting in in the sell, but let's see what technical analysis say. Okay, uh, let me... On the chart you're selling will be at second resistance. Yes, preferably the entry is at second resistance. I'm looking on selling UJ. Uh, yes, I... I I think there's a high chance of a sell. I just don't like the feeling, right? It's just a feeling that I don't like going against trend. Uh, you, the sell might be correct. Just don't like, okay. So why do you think it's highly diluted USD so strong against gold and the other major currencies? It's because the US is manufacturing. Is it because the USA is manufacturing of gold in China? <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> I think this is a, this question, honestly, I was wondering myself for the longest time, why is gold weakening when there's recession, um, economic crisis is here. We are, we are officially in, uh, what is it called? We are officially in bear market. So bear market means that you have two consecutive quarters of low GDP, right? Uh, two consecutive quarters where the economy is not doing well. And now it's July. So we are officially in the third quarter where the economy is not doing well. So we are officially in recession already. So I don't know why in recession gold is dropping like a fly. So I think it's a good question, but I, is it because the USA is beneficial of war in Ukraine and China? Okay, I, I wouldn't dare to answer that, but yes, 
uh, it baffles me as well, to be honest. Good question, Richard. It baffles me. I, would, I honestly, um, on a fundamental point of view, would not be able to answer you for this one. Right, but yes, I am wondering myself. The world is going crazy. We are literally in recession. We are in the third quarter of that uh, economy not doing well and gold is dropping. Like economically, that's, that's not what it usually happens. In some analysis, there is correlation in some both money between gold and recession. Yeah, uh, that's totally true. Okay, so let me just continue analyzing this for a bit. I, I mean, on a general point of view, I always expected people to run to the safe haven metal, right? Like, I thought the layman would just run to the safe haven metal, but not in this case. Okay, uh, so yes, I want to sell this because it's reaching the support uh, resistance of the channel. But again, because price is going on an uptrend, it makes me kind of nervous about this. But yes, emotions aside, let's tell, let's see what technical analysis is saying. Let's pull out our horizontal levels. Let's see what the daily is saying so that we can go. Okay, daily is in a very strong uptrend. If anyone sees a downtrend, let me know. I personally don't see a downtrend. Price has been moving higher and higher and higher for the longest time now. Okay. Um, Let's see if we can catch this possible pullback. Guys, I really don't know why this is happening. Just give me a sec. Uh, Why is my mouse doing this? Okay, let me just open another trading view. Honestly, the amount of technical errors today. The Wi-Fi suddenly stopped working. Now the mouse is going crazy. Okay, let me just analyze Reanalyze. Okay, let me. Can you guys let me know if you can still see my uh, screen? Everyone can still see my screen, right? Everyone can still see my charts, right? Okay, cool. Let me just quickly do this. We're gonna back it up with horizontal levels. I don't think horizontal levels will work very well with this and that's totally fine. Why? Because for this channel to be complete, the horizontal levels, looking at this horizontal level, we might think that price is going higher, okay? might actually think that price is going higher. So let me use Fibonacci confluence to find the entry for this cell instead. Okay, we're gonna use Fibonacci confluence. Let's play the Nike tick. Okay, we've got a Nike tick there, nice. Uh, for those who don't know what the Nike tick strategy is, uh, probably Desiree will be very familiar with this. But for everyone else, right? So the Nike tick strategy works this way. Okay, this is a strategy that we have found out ourselves. We have observed happen on the charts very often here at FS Fortune Group, and this is a strategy we play very often. Okay, so we expect price to do this Nike take. Okay, you see how it's doing this Nike take. Nike take, you know the shoes, Nike, right? 
from the Nike take area, which is 127.2, we expect price to reverse against trend to the 23.6 area. Okay, so we expect price to reverse from here to the 23.6 area, okay, which is uh, here. Oh, let me see. Yeah, which is this area. Okay, so usually it reverses from the 127.2 or sometimes it reverses from the 138.2. Okay, these are the two levels that it usually re, um, reverse from and our stop loss, we usually put it at 145. Okay, 145 is our stop loss area. Okay, so this is our possible entry area. The, the closer you are to 138.2, of course, the better your entry will be, okay? But your stop loss will be the 145 area. We'll put it slightly above the 145 area, okay? This red area, that changes to blue, uh, blue box. Okay, that changes to blue. This blue is your possible entry area. Uh, this green box is your possible take profit area. Okay, so this is a very simple analysis, straightforward one. We're not going to use the other way of analyzing. Okay, uh, let me see if I can find out more Fibonacci confluence lining up here. We are not calling for a long-term sell on USD JPY, okay? We're only calling for a short-term Okay, let's remove everything other than the 100%. I think this area is the more likely entry for the sell. Sell entry, okay? Your stop loss can, your take profit can be anywhere from the 23.6 area all the way to this horizontal. Anywhere from here to here, your entry can be here, okay? So why are we getting in for this sell? Uh, anytime we find analysis, we want to make, we need to reason it ourselves. We need to give ourselves enough evidence, of enough reasoning why we think it's a good trade. I do think it's a good trade, honestly. Okay, number one, price is reaching the horizontal, sorry, the channel resistance. The channel resistance so happened to nicely line up with the 127.2 Fibonacci extension. It also lines, lines up nicely with the 100% Fibonacci projection. So we can all safely agree that at this sell entry area, there is a strong resistance and therefore we think that price will have a hard time. When price gets here, I think it will have a hard time breaking higher and rather it will come here and reverse. Okay, so this is our forecast that it will come here and reverse. Okay, reverse either to the 23.6 area, which is what we usually do. We usually only play it to the 23.6. Why? Because we're being very conservative. We are mostly scalpers and day traders here at Everest Watching Group. We only play the 23.6. If you want to play further than 23.6, you can. That's entirely up to your own risk appetite. Okay, uh, let's try to back this up with indicators, right? Let's try to back this up indicators. Let's see what the indicators are saying. Because again, back to the pink dress story, we want more people to agree with us. The more people that agree with us, the chances of us winning this trade is higher, okay? Uh, so yes. Oh, wow. If anything, there might be a... Okay, no, I take it back. I was going to say, if anything, there might be a divergence. Nope, there's no divergence there. Okay, this would make sense, okay? So when price reaches our sell entry area and it just nicely reaches the stochastics resistance as well, that is just double confirmation that you are good for this sell. Okay, I think this is a high probable setup. Uh, of course, Ichimoku is going to uh, say it's going up. Ichimoku is looking for overall trend. Okay, so we're not going to use Ichimoku. Uh, we're gonna, not going to take Ichimoku's uh, opinion into consideration because Ichimoku is an indicator to look for overall trend. 
Overall, we think it's going up, but we're only playing a pullback. We're only playing a very short pullback, okay? Because even if price is going up, it's going up this way, right? So we're playing this pullback from here to here, okay? We're playing the pullback. Uh, don't like it, it's going against trend, but it is. these are still trades that happen, okay? These are still trades that happen all the time. Pullbacks happen all the time, we are playing the pullback. Okay, uh, let's see what RSI is saying. Mm, of course, RSI wouldn't be able to say much either, but but yes, okay, based on stochastic, based on the Fibonacci confluence here and based on um, the resistance there, I think this is a highly likely trait that might happen. Let me see if I can find even more confluence. Yep. I can find even more confluence. I personally will be getting in for this cell. Okay, this is a very strong confluence area. Okay, 127.2 to 138.2 is a strong area of reversal. Okay, I think this is a good cell, but you need to wait maybe tomorrow. Okay, because price is right here. The cell is like one, like quite a while away. Okay, it may, may, uh, maybe by tonight. Maybe by tonight you can get in for the sale. Okay. Um, nice option in Bogman and recommending the game to run still. So which asset should I be trading? Uh, if you are still working on your technical analysis, I think any there's no particular pair that will work well. Okay, technical analysis works well for all pairs and instruments, I find. Uh, okay, actually, sorry, I think about I find that it doesn't work very well on stocks, okay? So because stocks, why? Because stocks usually is like companies, right? So when it comes to companies, there are other things you need to also know the fundamentals of the company. Is the company doing well financially, blah, 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 the PE ratio, there's a lot of things considering. So when it comes to stocks, I think fundamentals also plays a huge part. But Forex and crypto, I find that technical analysis works super, super well on Forex and crypto. Cryptocurrency, Ethereum, I find Elliott Wave specifically works super well on Ethereum, okay? Uh, any Other than that, any just any random Forex pairs works with technical analysis, okay? Where can we get this recorded version later? You can just email, um, you can email uh, tick mail to get the recording, what they recommended for pairs for beginners. Um, I think gold is a good one, but again, gold weights a lot. Okay, so maybe EUR, USD. So that's the major pair. So anything that you see with USD, the majors, you see here on the screen, majors, USD, CAD, USD, CHF, NZD, USD, AUD, USD, EUR, USD, USD, JPY, GBP, USD, and um, just the USD pairs alone, I think is a very good place to practice. Why? Because it has volume, of course. So you can see uh, if it works out. I always tell people that I don't think trading is hard. The hard part about trading is actually learning how to trade and backtesting. Backtesting is a very time consuming thing. Uh, backtesting is basically going back into the past and seeing how well certain strategies work and identifying if you can see certain patterns, certain strategy. This is what we special, specialize in in Atlas Fortune Group. We go back and back test so that you guys don't have to. Okay, so let's move on to our next chart. Um, sorry, the chat disappeared when I got disconnected a while ago. Can you guys let me know what the next requested pair was? My chat box is entirely clear after I got disconnected just now. So I can't see the other requests you guys asked for. Are you also using MA? MA is also one that you can use, GBP USD. Thank you so much, Musa. MA is something you can use. It's just another way of indicating. Okay, so when it comes to indicators, don't think too heavily into it. Why? Because if you go into indicators, you go into technical indicators, there are hundreds of indicators out there, literally hundreds of indicators out there. 50 of them are gonna tell you that price is going up, 50 of them are gonna tell you price is going down. So which indicator do you use? Do you use the one that is effective to the, the charts and the time frame you are looking at? For example, just now, I didn't use Ichimoku to make my decision because Ichimoku is a indicator 
the tells you trend. Okay, so in that case, we already know that USD JPL is going in an uptrend. We are playing the pullback. So Ichimoku wouldn't be giving us relevant information. So the indicators you should be using is the indicator that you understand and you know how to use. Okay, you need to understand their characteristics and you need to know why, why this indicator was created. The, the more you understand a certain indicator, the more the better your analysis and more accurate that your analysis would be. Um, GBP USD, I caught this last month and it played out very well. Called a sell from here and it played out very well. So that's that. Let's see if we can get another good trade from GBP USD again. Oh, sorry. Yes, GBP USD and Richard is asking for EUR or EUR cat. Just give me a while. I only have eight more minutes with you guys. I'm going to quickly do this. Okay, I'm going to quickly do this so that we can cover both the EUR and the GBP. Uh, remember that GBP and EUR are very correlated pairs, okay? They are very correlated pairs. So if we think it's a sell for GBP, most likely, not all the time, but most likely we'll think it's a sell for EUR as well because they're very correlated, okay? Um, so I do think it's going on a downtrend. If anyone else sees something else, do let me know. Okay, but I only see that price is going in a downtrend, downtrend as well on the daily. Okay, so let's try to get analysis for this so that we can move on to the next part. Okay, so horizontal levels first. Horizontal levels. This one here. Mm, I don't like this chart. It's very choppy. It's starting to look a little choppy. I don't like how this cuts through everything. Um, there's this one part here. Just give me a moment. To see you can draw a channel. Nope, maybe a wedge. I want to identify whatever chart patterns are available. Maybe a channel here. Let me try to. I know it's moving in a downtrend. I just need to see if I can narrow down the exact area of movement. Okay, I think this is fair enough. I think this channel looks legit enough, right? The whole thing about technical analysis is there's no way to be 100% correct. Your job as a, a trader or analyst or whatever it is, a chartist is only to make sure that you can collect information as best that you can, right? You just need to collect information at, at the best that you can. So in this case, it's the best I can draw the channel. Uh, if you guys can see a better way to draw a channel, do let me know in the chat box because we're all just humans. I'm only seeing what my eyes are showing me, right? Maybe you guys are seeing something that I'm not seeing. Do let me know in the chat box. Okay, so we've got this resistance here. We've got this descending channel, we expect price to move within this channel. I'm a bit more biased to getting in for a sell because of the descending channel and because of the bearish pressure. Okay, so just a very, very quick one you can do. This is just a very, very um, quick one, right? If price breaks here, I think it's going to go lower. It's going to go to our first resistance. The problem with that is that it's going to be a very small, tiny little move. Don't know if you guys even want to trade such a tiny, small move. Okay, let me try to see a bigger move down. The problem is I don't think I can find a bigger move down because there's no horizontal levels on the left, right? There's not let me try to see if I can find confluence instead. We can use the confluence as a reference. Mm, that's kind of far away, okay? If price breaks the first support, can probably go to this 127.2 area, okay? If price breaks this first support, it can probably go to this 127.2 area. Let me try to find confluence at the 127.2 area. More confluence, I find the more accurate this analysis will be. If not, I'm kind of just guessing where price is going, which is not the whole point of the whole point of technical analysis is to hmm. give me a sec. Let me try to see if you can. Hmm. 
not the best charts, honestly. Okay. Okay, if price breaks this first support, right? I do think it's going to go down. I much prefer if there were more things lining up here, but there's none. Why do I need more things lining up there? Because the more things lining up here, it just means that it is a key and significant level. Price is attracted to key levels, okay? Price tends to want to go to the door, okay? It wants to, it wants to go to this, tends to want to go to that area where it's significant so that it's significant so that it can try to retest it, okay? But in this case, there's only 127.2 lining up there. I think it's a sell. I just, I can't really pinpoint the exact uh, entry, stop loss, and take profit. And therefore, I would have to skip this. I'm just going to give you guys a very overall general analysis, which is, I think, there is bearish pressure. I do think it's a sell. Uh, if it breaks the first support, it will definitely go lower. Lower to where? On a minimal, at least 127.2. My confidence of this trade is, I think, to sell. My entries may not, may or may not be the best. Okay, this is because I'm, I can't seem to pinpoint exactly which Fibonacci. That's totally fine. We can just move on to the next trade. Okay, this is not a very. The probability of it being a sell is high. I just cannot pinpoint the exact area where it's going, uh, to reverse from or sell from. Okay. Um, is it quite, oh yes, we use a lot of Fibonacci. Fibonacci is where we can pinpoint exactly. So for example, price is moving up here, right? Using Fibonacci, I can pinpoint exactly where I think price is going to reverse. I can pinpoint exactly that price is going to reverse from here. Okay, so my stop loss can be super, super tight. That is the beauty of Fibonacci Confluence. I've done it so many times using Fibonacci. Fibonacci is an amazing, amazing tool to look for entries. And spotting entries spot on is honestly a very good, <laughs> amazing feeling as well as a trader. Okay, similarly with GBP, although this is EURCAD, it's a different pair. The one we looked at earlier on was GBP USD. It is a downtrend as well. You can see this break of the support here. Usually what I like to see after a break is that I like to see it come and retest and then I get in at the retest. So in this case, it already did that. Do you guys see that? Uh, you guys probably would, some of you may not be able to start. If I was a new trader, I wouldn't be able to see this as well. Do you see this red and then it came back to retest and then it shot down, okay? Um, I'll show it in a line, see? It came, it broke, came back to retest and then it shoots down, okay? So for when it, does a break, I much prefer getting in. In this case, EUR cat is already on its way down. Okay, it's already on its way down. The worst part is there's no horizontal levels at the side. So I don't know when it's going to stop or rather I don't want to predict. I much rather if there was a lot of candles here giving me enough information so that I can look my entry stop loss and take profit. But in this case, I need to scroll really far away even to 2021, 2021 March, I still, there's still nothing. nothing. Even I keep scrolling, 2019, there's still nothing. Okay, finally in 2016, there is something here. Okay, based on 2016 um, low, it is reaching that low again. Um, honestly, I think for you, our cat, we can try, we can skip this. Another general analysis is that I think it is bearish. Bearish pressure is very strong. Uh, just that because there's no horizontal levels nearby, I wouldn't be able to pinpoint exactly where I think price is going to be this from. Okay? Because I, it, it can keep going down. I just don't know when it's going to stop. Right? Because uh, we're on the wrong time frame. We're on a time frame that isn't giving us enough information. Okay, so let me see if I go down to a small time frame. Of course, it's not going to give us relevant information either. On the one hour, yep. 
Okay. You can play this short, but it's going to be risky. You can get it for yourself. I just don't know where to get out, right? So I wouldn't be getting analysis for you guys who uh, you are on GBP. Okay, uh, it's very hard to get in on tricks that's already on the way to the destination. And worse still when I don't know where the destination is. Okay, so that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm so glad to have met you guys, most of you from Philippines. <laughs> Right, so yeah, I hope today something plays out. I think the USD JPY should be a probable one. Other than that, I hope you guys learn something from me today and you guys are able to implement whatever you learn into your own trading. I will catch you guys again soon, okay? Uh, yes, if you guys have any questions for me directly, I wouldn't. Okay, you guys can probably look for me on Instagram. This is my Instagram handle. J and no way, I can't remember my Instagram handle. I haven't been on Instagram. I think this is my Instagram. Okay, let me just double check. You guys can go look at my Instagram if you want to ask me questions on trading. If not, just if you need the recording or anything else, just ask for. Oh, okay, it's Cas J A C Q U E T S J T. Okay. Yeah, that's my Instagram. Okay, so I'll see you guys again soon. Thanks, guy. Thanks, thanks for attending. Bye, Desiree. Bye, Richard. See you guys in our other webinars. <laughs> okay, bye, guys. Thanks.